Okay, welcome to another day in this long scam baiting call. So, uh, my buddy Daniel has called me four times already. He sent me this just ridiculous um, picture of himself where he used a Snapchat filter that made him look like Liam Hemsworth. I think that's the guy's name. So, I'm cringing over the fact that I had to make myself look older. So I also did a Snapchat picture and tried to make myself look 80 and I didn't like it, but it looks good. So it didn't do a lot for my ego this morning, but what the heck, at least I woke up and I'm still alive. So in that event, I may send him that text message of me to his personal cell phone. So I do have his personal cell phone number and I'm going to go ahead and send this image and see if he calls me. So I'm going to pause this real quick. Okay, here we go. I'm about ready to send it. Oh my God. Okay, wish me luck. Uh. This is horrible. Oh my God, there goes my self-esteem. Okay, I'm gonna try to call him now. United States Treasury Operation Manager Daniel Morris. I'm not available at the, at the moment. You can leave your phone number and your name and we'll get back to you at the earliest. Thank you. Please record after the beep. Good morning, sweetheart. This is Annie. I think I tried to just send you a picture. I'm not sure I take selfies correctly, but I sent one over. Um, trying to wake up with a happy smile today. Uh, I called the bank and because it's Thanksgiving, the lady that I was supposed to go see, um, she she's out of the office until Friday. So I made an appointment for Friday at 10 o'clock to go into the bank. So uh, if you want to call me back, you can, but my soap opera is going to be coming on pretty soon. So I wanted to go watch The Young and the Restless and get ready for Thanksgiving. So happy Thanksgiving, Daniel. And thank you so much for all of your hard work helping me. I'll talk to you soon. Goodbye. Okay, Daniel. What a sweetheart you are. I left you such a nice message, you little effer. I'm not going to say it out loud. Okay, so I did send him a selfie of myself, and I look just... I think I look 80. I mean, I, I it turned out pretty well. So that that's Annie, and... Um, if you want to learn more about the next part of this scam baiting call, we'll see if he calls back. I'll try to stick around my computer for a little bit, but I have to jump on uh, other work right now. So we will be in touch shortly. Thanks again for watching. Okay, welcome to casual day. So Daniel called me back yesterday. He didn't leave a message, but he did respond to my picture and what he said was, um, let me pull it up real quick. He said, such a bright smile. Happy Thanksgiving, Annie. So apparently um, he probably still thinks that I'm an old lady. So before I continue on to this part of uh, my scam baiting call, um, my family and I kind of had have this game on Facebook. And normally when the game is played, you say a line to a movie and it's not an easy movie. So it's not something that's so common, common like I'll be back. So um, they could not answer this one or figure out the movie. And it's one that I've liked for uh, quite some time. So what I want to do is offer my viewers the first person who can identify the movie from this line will get a $20 gift card from Starbucks that I will send to you. So if you can identify this line from a movie. And so here goes the line. Victor safe now, thanks to us. 
So if you can guess what movie that's from, you will get that $20 Starbucks gift card. So let's go ahead and give Daniel a call back and see if he had any more comments to say about um, me going to the bank on Friday. United States Treasury Operation Manager Daniel Morris, not available at the, at the moment. You can leave your phone number and your name and we'll get back to you at the earliest. Thank you. Please record after the beep. Good morning, Daniel. This is Annie and I saw you called again yesterday. Um, I, My son, Billy's going to be coming over and picking me up for Thanksgiving. And so if you call me, I'll, I'll actually be with my family. And um, uh, granddaughter, Brandy Jane, is going to be there as well. And so I'm looking forward to Thanksgiving. Uh, thank you. I, it's hard for me to respond on text messages because my arthritis is so bad, but thank you for your nice text message and your comments about my smile. They are dentures, but they do work, and I, I like to have them in. So anyways, I, I'll talk to you on Friday. You have a happy Thanksgiving. Take care. Okay, we'll see if he calls back. Yeah, I've been watching way too much Lucifer. I really like that show. And so um, I think of this guy the same way Lucifer says about the detective is <laughs> he calls him a d So anyways, yeah, that, that's my bad word for the day. So I don't anticipate that I will respond if Daniel calls back, but so we'll see how that goes. So stay tuned. This is the continuated saga of the scam baiting call that I have been working on for 12 days. Uh, these scammers um, actually are soulless. They have no moral compass whatsoever. And so in portraying this scam victim, Annie, um, I had decided uh, yesterday to call in some reinforcement. I had to figure out what direction I wanted to go with this scam baiting call. So um, I'm going to play messages that I received from the scammers over the weekend. Um, if you watched the previous part, it ended with Daniel, who was supposed to call me on Friday morning and give me banking wire information so that I could go to the bank and do a wire transfer for the $15,000 he was trying to steal from me. And I never heard from Daniel. However, at the end of the day, Daniel called, never left a message. So on Saturday, I received a phone call once again from Christian, who I spoke with before. He's supposedly from the DEA, Christian Davis. And um, I'll play those voicemail messages that he left for me or for Annie. So he called Saturday and Sunday. He began getting very urgent in his request for me to call him back without any care in the world. So um, these scammers are actually incredibly evil that they are going to go to great lengths to get every last penny from an 80-year-old woman. So I have absolutely no compassion for any of them and karma is a bitch. So let's go ahead and play the voicemails that I received and this will be the one that came through on Saturday. Hi Annie, this is Daniel from the Treasury. Uh, please call me back as soon as you can. I couldn't reach out to you yesterday. I tried calling you. I thought I received a missed call from you yesterday, but um, I tried calling you back and you were not there. So as soon as you receive this voicemail, please call me back. You have my number. It's 512-221-1529, okay? I hope to hear from you very soon. Thank you and have a good day. Okay, so that one was from Daniel with the Treasury. So that was Saturday. So Sunday at 9.24 a.m., I get this voicemail message. Hey Annie, this is Officer Christian Davis here. Uh, 
give me a call when you get free and once you get this message give me a call I need to have a conversation with you regarding the investigation thank you okay so the loser calls back again at 1106 uh, this is Officer Christian Davis here from Drug Enforcement Administration. I need to have a conversation with Annie J. Niles. Uh, please give me a call back as soon as you get this message. My number is 915-235-1794. I repeat, 915-235-1794. Thank you. Okay, so Mr. Christian Davis uh, is frantically trying to get a hold of Annie. So I decided that I needed to up this scam baiting call a notch and, like I said, bring in some reinforcements. So um, I'm going to pause this video and then I am going to play the reinforcement for you here shortly. So here is my reinforcement. I absolutely adore my family. Um, Susie, my cousin, is just incredible. So the what's going on here is my cousin is playing the role of denial and D is the daughter-in-law of Annie. And so she is calling the scam baiter back um, because Annie ended up in the hospital. So I'm going to play this as I'm watching it because I just love watching her do this. She did an incredible job. She was so freaking believable. So please, only good comments about my cousin because I am so proud of her for jumping. This is her first scam baiting call and she is an expert. And I think that we're going to be seeing a lot more of her providing scam baiting calls for me because this is just amazing. So here we go. Here's the update with the Christian Davis. I have a bunch of notes on her table here and I, and I was looking at, there's something from a U.S. Treasury that in DEA, and she's got a bunch of money sitting here, and yes, this is, the drug is she in trouble? This is the drug enforcement I need. Uh, it's not uh, like that. It's some investigations yeah. related. Uh, it's all right, but she's okay. Just let her know that she needs to give me a call as soon as he uh, gets back, okay? Well, she's had a stroke, um, and she's in intensive care right now. I'm not sure. Um, we're kind of worried about it. But, oh, I'm um, really sorry to... Is there anything I can... She's all right, correct. Is she all right? She, well, she's stable at the moment, but she's um, she's on a vent and everything because the stroke affected a part of her brain. Okay, no worries. No Is worries. there anything I can when do? When is she uh, going to get back? I don't know. Uh, I just want to know, like, when is she going to come back? Oh, I'm not sure. If there's anything I can do to help right. with this, because I'm really scared... Um, I don't want her to be in trouble. Well, this is some this is something related to, to her. Like, uh, if you will be able to do that, then we can discuss it. But uh, not right at the moment. Just let her get free. Like when she's uh, all right, just give me a call, okay? I'll leave a message because I need to have a conversation with her, okay? Okay. Uh, well, uh, my name is Diane. Any things to trouble about? I'm sorry? I'm sorry? I, my name is Deanne. There isn't anything to get. And if hello? She, hello? Can you hear me? Yeah, good. Okay. Yes, I can hear you. You keep cutting out. <laughs> I just, oh, I want to make sorry. sure. I can hear you. Go ahead. I, I just want to make sure that, I, I just, I didn't know that she was in trouble. And, um, uh. uh what is your name? Dm. Oh, I'm. Sorry, uh, I'm Dm. I'm her daughter-in-law. Okay, listen, listen to me very carefully, okay? There is something. Her social security has been compromised, okay? Oh no. Okay. Oh. Hello. Hello. Her social security number has been compromised, and there is investigation going on under her name we are trying to help her get free out of it okay because there has been released something some illegal activities have been done through her social security number and we are, done, we are taking care of it 
I told her to just to stay calm and do not worry about it. I think it must be because of the stress which she took from the social suspension. But it's all right. We are taking care of it, and we need to have a conversation regarding the financial assets she owns. Okay, she owns the financial assets, but there is an investigation going on under her name for money laundering. Okay. Mm, okay. Hello. Yeah. Yes, I hear you. And she cannot get home. Yeah. So she cannot have the access to any funds right now. So the United States Treasury is currently working her out, helping her to get an exemption to get hold of her f funds. It is going to be given back to her with a United States Treasury check. So we are currently helping her. Okay. Okay. So that's why I gave her a call on. Friday on Saturday and Sunday, but I couldn't get hold of her. Right. Yeah. So I'm very sorry that she had a stroke, but is she all right? That that's a relief for us because she is in the trouble, and we don't want you guys to go in, into the same trouble. Okay. Oh gosh, I hope not. So make well, sure she that has she's keeping this, uh, she so has a bunch of money please. sitting here. Hello? Yeah, please, please listen to me. You need to first of all keep all the things to a safe place. Okay, try to keep all the things to a safe place because this is a very confidential information which I'm doing, telling you. Right. Hello. Yes, I hear you. I'm just. What do I do with so all this sure? money? Good. It looks like she went to the bank and keep got. Keep her in a safe place right now. Okay. Keep her to keep her in a place. I will be calling you by by the end of the day in the evening, okay? okay? Because we need to discuss something. Make sure that you're keeping it safe, okay? Okay. I'll put it All away. Right. I'll put it away. I'll put it. I don't know where to put it. Oh my and gosh! I'm so. And this is Elizabeth. Don, listen to me very carefully, okay? This is a very private, confidential information. Okay. Make sure you're not good anyone. Okay. Because there is a non-objection certificate which she has signed for it, which she has signed it, and which states that she cannot disclose it. So that's why it might be possible that she didn't told you about the because we told her not to share it with you. If anyone knows about it, then he or she is also going to is also be liable for the investigation. So that's why we told uh. her, and she did her work. But um, unfortunately, she has been through a stress and that's why it happened. So make sure you're keeping it safe and keep it private right now. We'll have a conversation in the evening or by the afternoon, end of the day. Okay? Well, do I tell my husband, her son? Or do I, I don't uh, know what to do. We'll call you end of the day. So don't say I'll anything? Call by the end of the day. Okay. Then I'll, I'm sorry? So don't say anything. At the end of the day, I'll give you a call. Then we'll discuss it. Okay. Yes, because it's going to be trouble for you guys. Oh no. She told me that. Uh, she told us that not to tell. That they shouldn't be getting bothered about it. Your her, her son and you. Okay. okay. Daughter-in-law. So that's why she was helping us out. All right. Okay. And you're gonna you call. You're going to call me tonight for sure? Because I don't know what to do here. I will, call, I will call you in three hours. After three hours, I'll give you a call. Okay. All right? Okay, that sounds good. Make sure you're keeping it safe, okay? Do not touch that thing. What does she have right now? Does she have a check or mm. a bunch of cash? It's a bunch of cash sitting. It's, uh, let me see. Um... She has fifteen thousand dollars. No worries, just take care of it, okay? Right now, just keep it. Up. Keep it in a safe place right now. Do not touch anything, okay? Okay. Keep the copies of the notes, and there will be a signed non-objection certificate by Christian Davis. That's me, okay? Yes. And you're with the who? Yeah. Make sure you're keeping it safe. So. Who are you with again? I'm from the Drug Enforcement Administration. Okay. Drug Enforcement Administration, Christian Davis. Okay, and this, okay. 
I see your number. Um, okay. I yep, we saved my number because she she told us not to disclose it with anyone and she doesn't want you guys to get in trouble so that's why she was keeping it out of it. Okay. But make sure that you keep that you guys are just making it keeping it confidential. Only you are the person who knows about it or if your husband doesn't also knows about it. No, he doesn't know anything about it right now cuz I just came to the house to get her some belongings of hers to take to the hospital. Okay, please so please do not disclose it right now. You have your number. Give me your number. I'm I'm using her phone. Hello. Hello. Do you want my personal number or do you want her? You got her number. That's what I'm calling you from. I need your personal number. I need your personal number. Okay. Hello. Ready? Give me your personal number. Four zero two. Yeah. It's 402. It's 402. It's 402. Your name is Dan. Deanne. D E A D E A N. N E. All right. keeping it all safe because I need to tell this to the United States Treasury, okay, because they were concerned about her because she was holding some amount which she wanted, she had to deposit it in her United States Treasury account. So I guess she might have got through a lot of stress and she had to go through all of it. If she, if you ever get, if you go, go to her, just let her know that everything is okay, okay? Okay. And just no, do not let, not tell her anything about it, but just let her know that everything's okay. Yeah, you got a call from the drug enforcement, and they it's said so that it's away. everything fine. She doesn't have to go through all the stress again, okay? Okay. I will tell her. And you should also maintain the confidential. You should also maintain the confidential reports, okay? Let, okay. Just make sure that no one's able to know about it. Because this is this is about her life and her life financial assets. Oh, we this don't want to miss... Oh. Because it's all going to be seized. It, it was all going to get seized and we, the United States Treasury is currently holding them, okay? Oh, no. She's got a life insurance. It's a life savings on it. She's got life insurance and if something happens yeah. to her, she's we got to pay for that somehow. If, if she dies, I mean, I don't know what to do if she dies. Because that's all the money. If she sh dies, then, Unbelievable. There is, then uh, you, we have to seize all the funds. Oh, no. Oh, gosh. Okay. So we are trying to <clears throat> save her right now. You make sure you're keeping it to yourself and about your, uh, about her son. Make sure he doesn't know about it because it's going to hamper her as well. It was her wish that her son, his, her son doesn't know about it and he doesn't go through all any kind of any troubles, okay? Oh boy. It was her wish to do that. So is this gonna, is this gonna affect me too? Will I get my funds seized? Because I know now? No, if you are, no, no, it's not up to it, but you are oh. involved in it. Okay. But if you are going to, like, if you are disclosing it with anyone, then we have to seize all your bank accounts, as well as there will be an arrest warrant issued under your name. Oh. Yeah. Okay. I won't say anything. And we have to, unfortunately, suspend your social security number as well. Oh, God. Okay. Okay. So that's why we are helping her out. We were helping her out. So make sure that you're keeping it to yourself. I will. And I'll give you a call in three hours, all right? Okay. Thank you. All right. You have my number. Just make sure you're saving, you're adding it to your address book. Okay. Because I'll give you a call. If I have any th other questions, like if, hello? Yes, go ahead. 
if if I come across anything else that I can, if I need to call you, can I call you? If, if yeah. there's other things that I come across, because yes, there's a bunch of stuff on this you. table. You, you can leave a message. Okay. You can leave a message. Just keep it aside right now. Just keep all the things aside. Because she made sure that it's a... Because she had something, she had written down everything there. So just keep it like that, in a safe place. Keep the funds in a safe place, because she had to do something, okay, with the pay funds. She was about to do it, and her phone got disconnected. Oh. Hello? Hello. I hear you. So we will let you know. I, yeah, we will let you know. The United States Treasury might give you a call today. Okay. I have your number. I let her, I let them know that you are kindly. You don't know about all of these stuff, which has been going on with her. Okay. But make sure that you're keeping it safe. Okay. I will. Uh, and keep the man, maintain the confidentiality about it. Okay. I. I it's think her life savings and her life funds, which she wanted, to pass it on to her son. Right. Well, I think she has a little. Um, a little suitcase thing that I can put all this stuff on her table in it and just put it away. I think. All right. Okay, yes, please do that. Okay, I will. I'll give you a call. If you have anything, you can just leave a message. I'll give you a call, okay? Okay. Thank you very much. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bravo. Just so you guys know, she ad-libbed, you know, we discussed the outline of where the direction was going to go with Annie getting sick and going to the hospital. She ad-libbed all of that. Did a brilliant job. It was so freaking believable. Way to go, Susie. I'm calling Mr. Christian Davis back. Mr. Davis, this is uh, Deanne. Um, I was, I, I noticed I missed your call yesterday and I deeply apologize. Um, I did manage to get everything placed in a miniature suitcase and I was able to lock it. So it is under her bed and I'm just going to wait to hear what you want me to do or if you were going to wait um i got called into work yesterday so i deeply apologize and i was pretty busy until late in the evening so um i also work today uh, i kind of have a full schedule this week but um i don't know if you're available um in the evenings at all to talk to me um, I, I've just, I've been worried sick about this and I'm losing sleep over it. Um, and it's really hard to keep from my husband because we have a very trusting relationship and, um, but I, I will keep it from him for now until you tell me what's going to happen. Um, I don't want to go to jail or anything and I'm kind of worried about it. Um, a lot has happened. Um, my mother-in-law, she, uh, they, she ended up having a complication yesterday and they ended up putting her in a coma, just an induced in, co uh, in a induced coma so that her brain can rest because her brain was swelling a little bit and she was kind of combative. So they're going to let the brain heal a little bit and um, she's still on a vent and um, we're just waiting to hear more and uh, anyways, um, I hope I can talk to you soon. I just, I just need to be reassured that I'm going to be okay. <laughs> I 
just can't believe I stumbled on this and it's just bothering me. Um, so whenever you can, give me a call back and uh, let me know what I can do. Um, this is really stressful, so anything you can tell me to calm me down a little bit uh, would be greatly appreciated. Um, I will talk to you soon. Thank you. Bye-bye. Well, I tried. <laughs> Fabulous job. I know, you're hungry. Hold on a second, kitty. Um, Susan, incredible. I mean, I believed you the whole time. I thought you were seriously sad for me, for, for poor Annie. Okay, let's go to the next one. Looks like you called... Daniel Morris. Time to call Mr. Daniel Morris. Yes, let's. The U.S. Treasury Supervisor. Mr. Morris, this is Deanne Nile. Um, my mother-in-law is Annie Nile. Um, I talked to uh, Mr. Christian Davis yesterday with the DEA. Um, plus, I came across, I don't know, I, I came across a lot of notes um, at my mother-in-law's and a bunch of cash, um, and me and Mr. Davis um, discussed how much was there, and I, so he had me safe, put it in a safe place, and so I found a suitcase, a miniature one that um, I could lock, and I put all the money in there, and I um, put all the notes in there, but in going over the notes, I noticed your name, and it said... You were a supervisor for the U.S. Treasury. Um, Mr. Davis mentioned to me that somebody from the U.S. Treasury was going to call me. Um, I'm not sure if you're that person. Um, it looks like my my mother-in-law has been talking to you. Um, I, I'm not sure if you know, but she suffered a stroke. And she's in the hospital and on the vent. And then today, they had to put her in an induced coma. Um, it's been a very stressful time. And right now, we're not really sure uh, what's going to happen. Um, they said that they just need to heal her brain. In the meantime, in talking with Mr. Davis, I he told me that since I came across this that I may I, I could be in trouble if I say anything so I'm just trying to figure out what to do um, he told me not to tell my husband right now um, until we figure out um, if I'm going to be able to help or not I don't know I would like to help because I don't want her to lose her money because um, it's the only money she has and part of that is her life insurance and we need that to bury her in the event something ever happens to her and right now it's a very big possibility um, so I'm willing to help with whatever I can in this investigation um, I just don't know what I'm supposed to do um, my schedule is very busy this week um, I have a very big work schedule on top of going and seeing my mother-in-law so um, if 
you could call me. Um, I don't even know if you're the person I need to talk to, um, but this is my phone number. Um, and if you can see my phone number, if not, it's 402. Um, and I look forward to hearing from you um, as soon as you can. Thank you very much and have a blessed day. You have such a sweet well, we'll voice. See. We'll see what happens. Okay, we'll see what happens. Oh my God, Susan. Okay, oops. Okay, let's go to the next one. Next video you sent me over. So this one will be mm, on 12 1. So this is over. I'm try to call Mr. Davis this evening. Um, he's tried to call me twice in the last two days. Um, his last message was This is the office of Christian Davis here. I need to talk to. He said, Diane. Um, this is really urgent. Call me soon as you get this message. And then repeated his number. Um, and then thanks so much. Urgent, so, urgent. Here we go. I'm going to call him. family. Pretty awesome. You're sniffling, Susan. Are you sick? He sounds like he's stoned or drunk. Hi, Mr. Davis. This is Deanne Nile. Um, I was just calling you back. I saw you called me yesterday as well as today. Um, it's just been incredibly busy at work, and I have not been able to get to a phone to actually call you back. So um, all I could do is keep trying at night or wait till my next day off, um, which is uh, Sunday or tomorrow night. Um, if you could um, let me know if um, how things are going and. Um, I'm still waiting to hear what I'm supposed to be doing, if anything. Um, just so you know, I got everything put away safe, um, and it's in a locked little suitcase, and I'm um, just waiting to hear word from you on what I need to do. Um, Annie is still in intensive care. She's on the vent, and she's still in a coma. Um, so it's been really tough keeping this from my husband, but I will do that for now because I don't want him to get in trouble either. And I just want to follow whatever you're telling me to do uh, just to keep everyone safe and keep the assets safe because Lord knows we need them. So um, I'm just calling you back and if you can, um, either keep trying and you might catch me or I might have to wait till Sunday to actually talk to you during the day so um, thank you very much and I will hopefully talk to you soon okay bye bye you're so sweet so sweet well I still think it's a different time zone where he's at definitely most definitely okay Let's see what one we have next. Stop. Stop. Okay. Next one. Okay. This one, it would appear he got, okay, she got through. Okay. to call again. 3.01 p.m. on Mr. Davis, this is Deanne. Deanne Nile. 
you just called me? Is he drunk Hello? or sleeping? Yeah, Mrs. Nile. Yes. Okay. Uh, how is Joe? How is Mrs. Nile? Um, no. She is. She's. She's still um, in a coma. Um, still on a vent. Um, we spent all night there last night, so I'm kind of still awake. <laughs> So, okay, Miss, Miss Niles, uh, you, we have a very bad timing, okay? We both have very bad times. Now please tell me appropriately what exactly is there on the desk of Mrs. Annie Niles. Say that again? What exactly you can see on the desk of Mrs. Miles? On the desk? Yeah, you said you found papers on a bunch of cash over there. Yes, um, I had, you told me to put that all in a safe place. Um, so I did. Um, I remember there was, we, I counted fifteen thousand dollars in cash. There were mm -hmm. notes that said um, there was three names uh, with phone. Let's see. I'm trying to think. Uh, can you hold on just a second? If I can get that suitcase. Well, okay. Sure. Okay. But. Is he like sleeping or what the hell? <laughs> Are you really shuffling your feet? You're so cute. You're so dang cute. <laughs> Susan. Oh my God, the door closes. This reminds me of the office. <laughs> Now you're shuffling papers. Okay. Are you still there? You're so cute. Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, I have notes here for, there's a, do you know a Monica Shaw? Yeah. Yeah. You do? It says she's with the yeah. DEA. And then um, a Daniel Morris. Mm -hmm. And it says here, wait a minute. He's a supervisor um, for the US Treasury. And then um, your name. As the you're, you're with DEA, um, let's see, she had an appointment at 10 a.m. It just says 10 a.m. Friday um, with her bank at Wells Fargo. Okay. And then, let's see, anything else here? Something about a wire transfer? Um, but nothing else is written on that. And then... Well, I can't, that's, that's about it. And she's got, like, her bills here, and everything's just kind of, it was kind of strewn on her table. But All right. So, Miss Miles, uh, we had to have a conversation tomorrow, okay? 
you need to give me a call in the first, first in the morning, okay? How early can I do that? I have to be to work by 8 o'clock. So I'm going to have to leave here when by 7.30. When you get free then. Okay. When do you get free? When oh, do you get free? it has, it's not Sorry. been good lately. We're coming up on the Christmas holiday. Um, we're swamped. It's very hard for me to, to get to my phone during the day. Okay. I'm not allowed to... You need to, to manage at least one hour from the day, okay? I should be around 11 or 12. 11 or 12. 11 o'clock or 12 o'clock in the morning. Okay. Let me write this down. Yes. And you need to do that and you need to take the papers as well as uh, not the papers just take the cash with yourselves okay and um, there will be instructions given to you where you need to deposit it okay deposit it oh i'm good i'm gonna take the cash i'm gonna carry that fifteen thousand dollars on me oh my god yeah. Okay. Um, I can bring it with me. I, you know, I, right now, it's my job. I mean, if I, um, I have to drive all over the place, um, and I'm not allowed to have my phone on me, and as busy as we were last week, it's not getting any better this week. Um, I haven't even had lunches. Let's just put it that way. When, when, when do you get free? You need to tell me that. Okay. So demand. Well, I will watch the clock. When do you get free? I don't know when I'm free. It. I never know it when I'm free during the day. It's hard to tell because of work it's not i don't have a I, I don't have a desk job i have i i'm out in a vehicle driving I know, I know that we know that but now i need you to tell me what exactly is the time when you get free i don't i can't i don't know it changes every day that's the problem Maybe just give me a call uh, the way you called me today, okay? Give me a call the way you called me today. Okay. Uh, you, you do not have to carry the cash. We'll let you know what you need to do, okay? Okay. Yeah, if you can let me know what to do, then maybe I can do it. And then, um, you know, and then call you once I do it. Or, I don't know how... Do I need to be on the phone with my, you when I do it? My friends. Yes. You do not have to think a lot about that, okay? The instructions will be given to you. Okay. <clears throat> this is a confidential information. I cannot disclose it. You will be disclosing it tomorrow. Okay. Keeping it under wraps, eh? Yeah. Just yeah. make sure you don't take it lightly or don't take it as a joke over here. There is someone's money which is in at stake right now. And I do understand that you should also understand this that Miss Annie Jane Niles is in a huge trouble right now. What happens if she dies? Okay. Well, she won't be. Let's just hope that dad she's okay, okay? It's not a hope about she gets uh, she dies about, or else you guys are going to be in a lot of big trouble. His son, her son, and you as well. So please, let's just hope that she's okay. 
and I'll give you a call tomorrow and we can try to fix at least something so that she she's going to be okay, okay? Just from the stress she's going through. All right? All right. I just, uh, I'm going to, me and my husband could be in trouble if she dies. Even if I'm cooperating with you. I'll be telling you that tomorrow. Okay. What we, what is going to happen, okay? I'll tell you tomorrow. Okay. I'm just, this is very stressful for me. Thank you so much. Now give me a call. No, I'll give you a call. Bye-bye. Oh. Bye-bye. <clears throat> Well, there's, he sounded like he was asleep <laughs> and he checked his phone in the middle of the night to call me back. He was barely able to hold it together. He sounded almost like he was drunk or ripped out of his sleep. <laughs> it's kind of hilarious. Um, so he says, if Annie Nile dies, um, me and my husband are going to be in very big trouble. Um, and I tried to verify that. And he said, he will tell me this tomorrow. And he's trying to give me a time frame where I need to call him. And I explained to him that... I work and I'm not exactly at a desk job. Can I do this money thing without him being on the phone? So we'll see. Um, stay tuned. It's about to get really good. Great job, Susan. Great job. Oh my God. Okay, so that's absolutely absolutely disgusting that you know somebody even though she's a figmented individual Annie Nile is lying in a hospital bed possibly dying and they're trying to still go after her and take every penny she has and go through the family to do it threatening them this is why I as I'm editing and putting together this scam baiting series called it subhuman scammers because this is how they operate. They don't care about you. They don't care about me. They just want the money. And it's painfully obvious in that phone call, even though he was basically incoherent. Um, way to go, Susan. This is just sickening. Um, I, I'm kind of not surprised, but it still makes me very upset uh, because they're doing this to real people and real people have these stresses and puts pressure on their health how many people are suffering going through this and and these videos are to show you exactly how much they care and they don't so if you could stay tuned for the next um, phases of this scam baiting call and subscribe to our channel please help support business fraud prevention and fraud for thought uh, like the video, share the video, and help protect the elderly, especially the social security number scam is so scary for them because they feel like they're going to lose um, benefits from losing their social security number. So once again, uh, thank you for watching and stay tuned for the next one.